Good afternoon. This is Dustin Noseworthy uh, again here from Lima, Peru. Um, if you've turned on this video, you're probably quite curious about the title. It's called The Man That Jesus Killed. And you're probably thinking, well, Jesus didn't kill anyone. Jesus raised the dead. Jesus healed people. Um, there is a person that Jesus killed. There's one person in history that Jesus killed. And he killed him through his own death. Now, now I may have you confused. Jesus killed a man named Adam and the nature he represented, the Adamic nature. And if Jesus killed Adam and his fallen nature, that means that me and you are not in Adam. We're not in a nature of sin. We're in Christ and we have a new nature. If there was nothing you could do, if there was no good work that you could ever do to get out of Adam to get out of your sinful fallen state, only receive Jesus. That means now that you're in Christ, there is no bad work you could do to get you out of that position in Christ. You are in Christ. You are not in Adam because Jesus killed that sin nature. Jesus killed that Adamic nature at the cross. So what does that mean for us today? That means if we're not in Adam, if we're not in sin, if we're not in uh, fallenness, or if we don't have a sinful nature inside of us, that means we don't have to live like we're an Adam. We don't have to live like people who are sinners. We can live like Christ people. We can live like Christ men and women. I want to read to you a promise of God about this in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 47 through to 49. It says, the first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man, who's the second man? The Lord Jesus. The Lord from heaven. As the earthy, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now that's a great promise. Now generally people read that talking about uh, resurrection and going to heaven. And while that's all wonderful and good in its context, I think um, the scripture is multi-layered multifaceted, and I think that's a promise we can apply in life right now, because in Romans um, chapter 8, um, and the verse escapes me right at the moment, but in Romans chapter 8, there's a scripture that says that we have been destined to be conformed to the image of the Son, that he might be the firstborn of many brethren, so our destiny in this life is is to be conformed to the image of Christ, and we can be conformed to the image of Christ, we can reflect the image of Christ, because we are in Him, and He is in us. Just as before we were believers, we had a sin nature, and our lifestyle reflected that, our lifestyle reflected the image of Adam, our lifestyle reflected sin, our lifestyle reflected poor choices because we had a sin nature, now being in Christ, with Christ's nature inside of us, our life can reflect can reflect, pardon, the nature of Christ, the actions of Christ, and the character of Christ. So what's the problem here? The problem is we don't understand the position we are in in Christ. We don't understand that Jesus already killed Adam. We're not in Adam. We don't have to try to kill off our flesh. We don't have to try to kill off uh, wrong desires we might struggle with. We have to understand that that man is already dead. The old man's already dead. I don't know about you. I grew up in church and I, I, I've heard it said, you know, in conversations that, um, well, something happened yesterday and I got mad. It was that old man rising up in me. Well, that's not true. The old man can't rise up in you. The old man is dead. Jesus got rid of him through his death, burial, and resurrection. There's six things that happened to Jesus in his death, burial, and resurrection. Number one, Jesus was crucified. Number two, Jesus died. Number three, Jesus was buried. Number four, Jesus was quickened again by the Spirit. Number five, Jesus was raised from the dead. And number six, Jesus sat down at the right hand of the Father. Well, I want you to know, when Jesus went to the cross, the person that you were in Adam, the person I was in Adam, was nailed to that cross with Jesus. Hallelujah. The greatest revelation that you can get is not the fact that Jesus died for you, but the fact that Jesus died as you. That when he was crucified, you were crucified. That when he died, you died. That when he was buried, you were buried. 
that when he was quickened by the Spirit, you were quickened by the Spirit. When he was raised, you were raised. And when he sat down at the right hand of the Father, you sat down with him. And right now you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And you can say, like 1 John 4, 17 says, as Jesus is, so am I in this world. I'm not going to become like him. I'm already like him. Hallelujah. I'm not a sick person trying to get well. I'm a well person learning to walk in wellness. I'm not a poor person trying to get rich. I'm a rich person learning to walk in the blessing. I'm not a sinner trying to get righteous. I'm a righteous person learning to walk in righteousness. You're not, we're not perverted people trying to become holy. No, we're holy people learning to walk in holiness. We are not depressed people trying to get joyful. We're joyful people learning to walk in joy. We're not tormented people striving for peace. We're peaceful people learning to walk in peace. We're not angry people wanting to obtain love. Hallelujah. We are loved and we have the nature of love inside of us and we're learning to walk in love. We're learning to discover where we already are and be transformed into who we already are. I'm going to say that again. We are discovering where we already are in Christ and we're being transformed into the reality of who we already are. I want to read you a scripture in Romans 6 verses 1 through 7. This reinforces it. It says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we? Or pardon. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer in therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Where did that happen? In his death, burial, and resurrection. Therefore we are buried with him in, by baptism into death. Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For we have been planted together in the likeness of his death. We shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Hallelujah. Resurrection life is on the inside of us. And the more we understand that resurrection life in us and that new nature in us, the more we reflect that in everyday life. Knowing this, that our old man, Adam, the man made out of dust, not is going to be, is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed. And the body of sin is not talking about your physical body. It's talking about the old nature. Might be destroyed that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. I want you to know you are free from sin because you don't have a sin nature. There's two words in Greek for the word sin. One is the word harmartia. The other one is the word harmartano. Harmartia is a noun, a per and a noun is a person, place, or thing. Harmartia is not talking about sinful actions. It's talking about the sin nature that a person has before they receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, or the nature that we had before uh, receiving the Lord. Okay? The sin nature, harmartia. And then harmartano is a verb. It talks about sinful na actions, you know, bad habits. And it gives the idea of any kind of sinful habit, any kind of bad action, whether it's a, something big or small, per se. Okay, whether it's something as big as an addiction or something as small as just a bad attitude. Sinful actions, harmartano. And it's interesting here in Romans 6, when Paul says, you are, we're dead to sin, that the old man has been crucified, and that he that has been free, that is dead, pardon, is free from sin, that word sin is the word harmartia, noun, the sin nature. He's not saying that it's impossible uh, to, have, to commit sinful actions. We know that's not true. We all make mistakes. But Paul is saying you are dead to the nature of sin. You do not have a sin nature. It is completely dead. Jesus got rid of it on the cross. Okay? So what do we have to do? We have to understand that. So if we are struggling with sins, harmartano, sinful actions, bad habits, what's the problem? The problem is we're not understanding that our old nature has been crucified and that we have a new nature. We live in an identity crisis, thus we keep repeating the same destructive cycles, same destructive habits. So what do we have to do? We have to change our mind. We have to repent change the way we think, and stop seeing ourselves in Adam, but start to see who we are in Christ and who Christ is in us. Romans 6 verse 11 says it like this, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves dead indeed unto sin, 
harmartia, the sin nature, reckon, consider, meditate in the fact, but alive unto God through Christ our Lord. So we have to reckon, we have to consider, we have to meditate on the fact that through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, the sin nature was destroyed, we have a new nature. We have to see that every whatever we were in Adam was totally crucified and dealt with on the cross, that Jesus became sin, he became sin, and that we have become righteous. I want to tell you something. When Jesus hung on that cross, he became sin, and he could have confessed in that moment, I am the sin of Dustin Noseworthy and Adam. But you know what? The flip side of that is, today, because I've received Jesus' work, I can boldly confess, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? So we have to understand, we have to consider, we have to meditate on the fact that we are righteous, that we have a new nature, that we don't have a sin nature. And as we meditate on that, and that becomes our reality, we begin to walk in that, and sinful habits lose control over our lives. It's like if you leave to go to a party, dressed in a tuxedo or dressed in an expensive suit. If you see a pile of dirt in the road as you're walking, say, from your house to your car or to a taxi or whatever, odds are if you're in an expensive suit, you're not going to jump in the mud. Why? Because you're wearing something that's valuable. You're clean. You're pure. Well, that's the way it is when we understand we have a new nature. We understand that we have a nature inside of us that desires to please God. We understand that we've been clothed in Christ and his righteousness, and that, change our, and that changes our habits. But where does this change start? In our mind. Last scripture, James 1, verses 22 to 24, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth away, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. Okay, it says if you're not a doer of the word, you are like a person that looks in the mirror, and when you walk away, you totally forget your reflection. But I want you to know something, that word doer, of the word in the Greek it gives the idea of something totally different as opposed to uh, just reading a scripture and trying to act on it. It gives us the idea of an actor or an actress reading their lines to prepare for a play. How does an actor or an actress read their lines to prepare? They have to read it and meditate on, on it in a way that what's written in the script, what's written um, about the character that they have to act as, they have to read that in a way that that's assimilated into their personality. Okay? The Word is our spiritual mirror. The more you look into this spiritual mirror, the more you look into the Word, the more you assimilate the reality of who you are in Christ into your thoughts, into your emotions, into your actions, and into your personality. You have to meditate you have to take the word, you have to see yourself in the word, and you have to meditate on that until you see that you are dead to sin and alive unto God. And as you do that, little by little, your actions change. Because as, jo as Pastor Joseph Prince says, right believing produces right living. It's not going to be prayer that transforms your life, even though that prayer, though prayer is important. It's meditating in the word it's seeing yourself in the word specifically in the new covenant the new covenant is our mirror that shows us who we are in christ and as we meditate on that and assimilate that into our personality and assimilate the fact that when he died we died and assimilate the fact that when jesus was raised we were raised and assimilate the fact that when he sat down we sat down and we're exactly like him now and little by little sinful habits lose hold over you every action that's not in in agreement with who you are in Christ, begins to change. And you begin to reflect the image of the heavenly man and not the earthly man. Amen? I hope this has encouraged you. I hope you've been blessed today. Have a great day. God bless.